Hi, I'm Tom Hack, and on the video today, on the line with me today, is Lisa Loveday, who is an educator with the Avery County School Systems in North Carolina. And Lisa, uh, I've asked to join me on this video because she has recently delivered the Adventure Day program um, in a school. And we realize that some people are going to be delivering this in a school, others will be delivering in an after school setting. But I wanted to get Lisa on because she is a longtime educator and she uh, boldly went where few have gone before and delivered this program to uh, two classes. Is that right, Lisa? Two classes, yeah. Two classes. And here we are. It's March 21st, 2012. So um, let's start here, Lisa. If you could share with us why, why did you want to do this? What was your... Um, uh, what drove you to want to lead a program with these fifth graders? Well, there were several things. One of the things was the experiential education program here in Avery County has been established for many, many years. And when I took this program over a couple years ago, one of my goals was to continue the growth of this program. And the person that was here before I was friends with, and I knew that everything that he had done. And so as I have, pursued it growing there there are blocks in certain places so in meeting with the superintendent last fall he and I talked about well what about going younger what about going to the fifth grade and um, mm. and I was excited about that not real sure how it was going to happen because we do have some transportation situations that come up so when I was able to to join you at the peak conference this year and hear about your fifth grade initiative. I, I was, I was very excited as you know, because that's something that um, my superintendent and I had talked about very recently. So as I was already working on it and then saw your program, I was like, okay, I've got to get with you. So this is a way for me to continue growing the program that, that we've got going here now. And it works perfect to go into the classroom it was. It works perfect that it's about three hours long, so it, it all just kind of fell into place, and there were a lot of consistencies with some of the things that I had been working on in your program, and so I was delighted to adopt a lot of your program. <laughs> so so uh, share with us, what, what was it about the program design that you liked, and then I'd, uh, maybe later I'd, I'd like to talk with you about where you think you could change it or how you may have in incorporated different aspects. But what about the program design appealed to you? Uh, what I especially liked was how I, I, I appreciated the correlates that went with the core standard course of study. Okay? And the character cards and the metaphor cards, those were a great hit when I delivered the programs. And I think I may have told you the the teachers, the classroom teachers, asked me to please email them those metaphor cards. They want to use them in their classroom often. Oh, that's great. I thought that was a great um, interaction tool, a great debriefing tool. And um, the kids were real excited about it, too. Um, there was, there was a, a moment there when I asked everybody if they knew what metaphors were. And that was one thing that I added to the design. I added a, a little instruction piece about metaphors, mm. which may well be a part of your design, but... Um, it, it wasn't in the outline, so I added a little part about that. And I had done some research and had some examples, and um, there weren't a whole lot in the class that raised their hand and said, oh, yeah, I know what a metaphor is. And the teachers kind of glanced at them and <laughs> said, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, y'all are supposed to raise your hands now. Come on. Right. Well, they didn't know what metaphors were. But when they started looking at those cards, the conversation that happened in their little groups was outstanding and the teachers were really impressed. So the draw for me, not only the activities, but also how it related directly to what they're doing in curriculum. And that's one of the teachers actually made a comment about language arts, if I can find it. So uh, for everybody who's uh, um, curious as, as to what Lisa's doing, uh, she's looking at an evaluation form, this two-page, and this may not show up in the video, but this is a downloadable <clears throat> document that we hand uh, to teachers afterwards 
so that they can actually give us a, an evaluation. This can be done online or I, I, uh, you can leave it with the teachers. So did you print this out and actually leave it with the teachers? I printed it out and left it with them. Mm -hmm. there, were, um, there were a couple teachers that gave it to me before I left, and then the, the other teacher got it. I was back in the school doing a, a training for my program. So, um, so I got them all within a week. I had them. But she, she commented that, that the students had to think outside the box, which related very well to their language arts, and that they were also applying strategies that they didn't even realize that they had already been taught in a different way. So it was very consistent with, with their curriculum base and with their, their standard course of study, their course standards. So, and I love experiential education and to be able to teach it to younger kids, I was delighted. So, <laughs> so, so all right. So tell us about, um, it sounds like you didn't really have to, sell this, as it were, to the teachers. They were already open to the idea. Um, how did they feel about the amount of time that you were going to take? Did they, did, did they resist about the, the two or three hours, or did it, was that an easy for them? Well, it was easier for them for the two hours. Right. Now, I, I did talk and negotiate a little bit with them, trying to get it longer, closer to three. Mm -hmm. And in the end... The, the morning session, which is constrained by their lunch and everything, it ended up being about two hours and 20 minutes. Okay. And then the afternoon session was actually closer to two hours and 45 minutes. Okay. So that was, got most things done, and the teachers were very excited about it. And what where, where I'm working on the cell now is with the principals. Oh, uh, really? So tell, and, tell us about that. Well, I think most principals are excited about it. Uh -huh. But you know, when I met with the principals last fall, I invited them to let me know if they wanted this program. I, I introduced it to them and told them a little bit about what it would be about, that I would come to them. And the principal that came to me immediately after that meeting was the principal who, whose school I visited yes. uh, earlier this month. And she has also announced it at the most recent principals meeting and encouraged everybody to get in touch with me. And, and I know this is a really busy time of year, but I know that if I were to get some calls, I could make a day that I could go do a program for one or two classes. And that's, that's pretty much what our schools have. They'll either have one fifth grade or two fifth grade classes uh -huh. that I could do. So, um, so I'm, I'm planning to send out some emails and make that invitation, um, known again while it's fresh in their mind with what Mrs. Reese has shared with them. So, so what, when it came time to deliver the program, what did you, what have you learned about delivering it? Having never delivered it in you, you participated in a little workshop that I gave that was maybe an hour and a half long. We quickly ran through the activities. You've got a background in experiential education already. So somebody who's leading this may not, but I'm curious as to what, um, what you learned, maybe what uh, people should know before delivering this. You'd let it by yourself, right? No, actually, I had one of the facilitators that works with me in my oh. program had him join me. Okay. And and he's um, he he was very comfortable joining me, and he he kind of took a back seat during the the first program, but then he was he was out there right out there. Um, with me on that second program. Uh -huh. And what I learned is um, two hours is short. <laughs> two, hours <laughs> two hours is short. By really quickly. So I was, I welcomed that additional 20 minutes. And I, I think they did do a little bit of rearranging with lunchtime so that I could have that extra 20 minutes. Yeah. And um, I think what I also learned when I walked into the classrooms and saw the space, you know, all the desks were pushed aside. Mm hmm and I just, I was really relying on my previous experience. So I can understand how people who are doing it in, with, without so much experience and kind of as, as trials, I could understand how they might have a few hesitations, but it, it goes fine. I looked at the small space and I thought, okay, how are we going to fit the um, focus rings in here? You're right, right. And I'm thinking, okay. Well, you know what? 
this this just becomes part of the challenge is that they have to work within and intermingling and and some of the students were kind of like back to back and they had to position themselves yes and and it worked great because it naturally added a component to that challenge that was not contrived at all and um and they took it and they were like okay so they they made it and they they worked excellent with it and i think too so the smaller spaces worked fine that was the only thing i was really concerned about yeah and another learning that i had especially after reading the the teachers evaluations was that even though i wasn't really thinking that they were challenged as much as i could have challenged them the teachers were saying that this these were great challenges for them that this this really worked them because one of the classes was a very sports oriented class. It just happened that they were all there. They were all very used to working on teams, kind of knew a lot of the lingo and everything. Mm -hmm. So I did give them some additional challenges, but the teacher said that it was great for them. Really? Uh, yeah. so, so what other teacher feedback have you received that you could share with us? Wow. Um, The, the, the teachers are hoping that the problem-solving skills gained in this program will hopefully pass on to curriculum. But I, I asked the teachers to write comments, which was very helpful. Oh, that's good. It was great to see the students communicate with each other in a different way. Mm. That's a common uh, comment from educators in that the, uh, this program, like all experiential programs, uh, tend to draw out people who may not, you know, be, quote, leaders in the classroom. Um, one teacher told me that uh, in a traditional, you know, uh, exercise in the classroom where it's, it's, it's more linear, um, she's used to seeing, you know, her A students really excel, whereas her students sometimes who don't normally do well in that environment will step up into a position of leadership doing what we're doing. Right. Absolutely. They, they get to see their students in different roles. Yes. And, and that's, that was the whole beauty of it. Um, one of the teachers commented that students were definitely challenged in a positive way and that there was no pressure for a right or correct answer um, to any problem and that all the students were right. And, and the students all really like being white. We know that. So to acknowledge that and, and to have a, a teacher comment about it, um, yeah. they noted that the challenges presented did require team efforts and that the students certainly had to work together to meet the challenges. Um, in response to the self-esteem, there, there was a student who was not shunned by the group but wasn't really listened to by the group right. and so the comment about self-esteem was that that this was definitely um, a positive experience for that student uh, because they had been lacking in their own contribution and that was recognized and appreciated in this setting and once we started appreciating it Luke and I started appreciating it, the students started appreciating it they were like oh yeah you know that was really good yeah thanks for, for helping with that so so let's see they commented um, just some of the general things. I loved all the activities that were presented. If we could do one at the beginning of the year and then another one in spring, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me, tell us about that. The, um, I, I, in my experience, this is a great uh, activity to do at the beginning of the year. And as it turns out, if you could have an opportunity to come back later, what are your thoughts on that after? I mean, you've been around this. What do you, how do you think, why do you think the teachers want that based on what they saw? Because I think they see the value of it and the benefits of it and the transferability of it into their class. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, the, the principal actually approached me between the two sessions that I presented and she says, I've just heard so much positive already. Can you come back next fall and next spring? Oh, that's great. Because the students really do transfer what they're learning to what they're doing. And that's, that's part of what, what we do as facilitators, too. We talk about that. Right. How can you use this in your classroom? Well, well, gee, yeah, does this ever happen in your classroom where you have to try things again and again and again 
from different approaches. Well, yeah, it happens all the time. And what they also learn during a program like this is they learn that the different strengths that are available within their team and they're encouraged to utilize those different strengths to not have to be a hero and have them all themselves that they're given permission to say, well, I'm not really very good at that, but Tom, I know you're really good at this. Could you, could you help me with this? Uh Um, And you know what, what, what I was thinking in my mind, and I would, I would love just to catch you one time when I'm in Asheville, if we can work that out. I, I like this program for the end of fifth grade for a very selfish reason. It lends itself wonderfully to what I do with sixth graders in the fall. Which is what? Tell us that. Um, sixth graders in the fall come to the experiential education complex here in Avery County, and we do activities like the magic carpet. We do the activity called the stump jump. We do tennis ball mountain. We do, oh. Uh, Essentially, it's, it's, a, it's a day of, uh, it's a whole school day of, of team, at, team activities. Yeah, it's a half day again for, oh, the, for okay. sixth grade, the sixth grade program. It's a half day, and it's all team building programs that are all on the ground. Nobody leaves the ground. Uh-huh. And um, so, so, so as we did this, it prepares them for when they come out as sixth graders because they see the Alpine Tower, they see the climbing wall, they see all these huge structures, and they're terrified. Right. So I'm thinking that next year when this particular group comes out, they're going to go, oh, hey, yeah, Lisa, Luke, I remember you guys. Right. Oh, yeah, I remember you told us that there would be all these things out here. And so I think that's that's great preparation for them. So in a selfish way, I like this program for the – for the spring, but I was thinking for the fall, still some other team building activities that might might not be quite as challenging and push them quite as far as the focus ring does, or as the well, I called it holy moly. I don't is that what you call it? What do you call the, the whole tarp? The whole the whole tarp. Okay, yeah. I've been calling it holy moly. <laughs> I so, like that too. So, um, but you know, there's there's different activities that you can do with. With ropes, there's an activity just with untying the knots without taking your hands off. And um, there's a game that I love to do. I was actually working on my giant uh, cards oh, when, yeah. when, when you beat in. Um, make 20. You know, there's – and it's a, it directly relates to math. And it it kind of goes right along with your um, quick draw stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was thinking – Activities still very team focused or very partner or small group focused for the for the fall, and I think I, I would I would do that. I would I would I think I think I could pull that off. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> wow. Well, I am really excited to to uh, see the success that you've had so quickly, and it seems like with just a little bit of information and uh, there's. Uh, Obviously, there's more information that we can continue to add to the site that will make it easier for people who have not delivered stuff like this. So um, what are your words of advice for people who are considering going into a school like you did? I mean, there are some people who are thinking about uh, incorporating this in an after-school setting. Mm -hmm. What, What words of advice before someone says, uh, you know, they walk into a school or they try to present this to a teacher or an administrator, what would you tell them? Well, the one thing that I've been telling um, as many people as I can is that there is research that does prove that physical activity is healthy for the brain. And there is a direct relationship between physical activity and academic performance. Yes. And it's a positive relationship and um so i kind of start out with that and and that i've got physical activity that's not only physical activity but that it focuses on team building and problem solving and conflict resolution and it builds self-esteem so i try to get all of those words out there mm-hmm. and one thing that i've also let you know superintendents and principals know along the way is 
I had the opportunity last fall when my when my son started um, school up at Appalachian State University to go to the parent orientation. At that parent orientation, all the little workshops I went to talked about how freshmen are arriving not knowing how to work in a team, not knowing how to work with a partner, not real sure how to problem solve, liking and wanting to stay in their comfort zone and not willing to try those new things and mm-hmm. kind of step out of their own box and try things. So, so that's all concrete information. That's all fact. And we as experiential educators can go in and say, look, I've got these team building activities. This will relate directly to your curriculum in this way. This is what it will help your students achieve. And then I'd be really interested to know if you see any differences after we do this program. Um, and your teachers did. That's the great thing. Yes. The one, the one that I got back after after she had had it for a good portion of a week. Yes. She, she was. She was, and, and they were seeing differences during the program, too. Yeah. Like the group that was pulling in that one student that's kind of always on the periphery. They were like, wow, they really pulled it in. What great, how great is that for his self esteem? Yes. So, um, and that's a common occurrence. Uh, what what is, amazes me, Lisa, is that in just, uh, you know, two and a half, three hours, that we can make this kind of impact. And I, I think that. Anyone watching this video, I'd like them to consider, you know, what if they did what you're suggesting, which is come in multiple times in the fall and in the spring or maybe in the winter, um, yeah. and, and it it's begins to build on each other. So what we're doing so far is just a one-time event, and, you know, the, the results that, the, that you have experienced with these teachers in just three hours, boy, you know, you just start to say, what if this was, became a bigger part of a school or if you had it, you know, multiple touches rather than just one time. And I think that this is one of the neat things that can happen is that a teacher, at the same time that you're working with the students, you're also, the teachers are watching you and, you know, they begin to scratch their head and say, wow, I, you know, look at the results she's getting. I wonder if I could do a little bit of this. And that's where we can help teachers learn perhaps to incorporate this uh, even when we're not there. Yeah. Yeah. And the one, the one thing that I would advise too is for folks that are going in and doing this, you know, be willing to be animated with it all. Yes. Willing to put yourself out there because the, the kids love it. The high schoolers I work with love it. You know, the fifth graders got into it. And at one point, I don't, I don't even remember what I was showing them. Maybe I was showing them the, the magic coloring book or, or, or something. It wasn't anything grand. Yes. But I whispering to them. And they're like, Miss Lisa, why are you whispering? I was like, because you're listening better. <laughs> and, so, and, so the, and just be animated. Put yourself out there. Yes. Have fun with it. And, um, and just then sit back and watch, you know, what happens with the group. You know, yeah. enjoy observing the successes of the students. Yes. Sure. All right. So what, what about uh, a, a quick, as we wrap up, what about a quick word of advice to a teacher who's watching this video and uh, scratching his or her head, decide, trying to decide whether it's the right thing to do? What would you say to him or her? I, I would encourage them to step, step out of that box again, you know, thinking outside the box Okay, what's the worst thing that could happen just by trying? What's, what's the worst thing that could happen? And I would, inc- I would encourage them to be willing just to try it and then really think about it and think about the value. And th- that's what I say to teachers. You know, if this is valuable, let's make sure it keeps happening. And if not, please let me know because we don't want to waste any student's time. Right. And all the feedback I got was, yes. Not only can you come in the spring, but yeah, can we have you again in the fall? Yeah. So, you know, I think there are an awful lot of educators that aren't familiar with experiential education. And the, the more that we can do to share that knowledge, the better. Mm-hmm. I think that that's, and that's what we have to get out there. 
And what I will say too, the, the one thing that I was concerned about going into the program was the afternoon, the afternoon session. Because, because you led a morning session and then stayed and led an afternoon session. And then let an afternoon session. Uh, and I recommend people do the time. morning session only because then you avoid lunch. You know, right. whatever they've eaten at lunch. Right. Well, and and you know that's I was I was I was a little concerned about that. Yeah. But you know what? The teachers did such a wonderful job of preparing their students mm. because when they talk to the students, see, they know that they get to come out to the complex as middle schoolers. Right. They know the program, and so the teachers had them well prepared. They had lunch. They had a break. They came in. They were excited. They were motivated. Um, you know, they're, you know, I thought, well, oh, boy, as soon as I ask them to sit down on the floor, I'm going to lose them. But they didn't. And, again, that's where be willing to be animated. Keep them engaged. Keep them excited. And, and yes, you know, we, we do hear comments about, oh, man, I can't believe how you just pulled them in like that. Yeah. That's our job. That's what we do. <laughs> right, right. So, but I would do an afternoon session again because it did go well. Yeah, well, that's neat. That's good to hear because uh, being able to be at the school for that time period really makes a great use of your time because it's you're there for one block of time instead of if you're going back multiple times for just a morning session. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and experience with the rest of us. And, uh, and of course, as we move forward, and, and you begin to design a, a, a second program, a follow-up program, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share your design with the rest of us so that we can be all learn from this. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, I'll probably even invite you to help me work on it. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, sign off and say thank you.